I would like to welcome everyone to this event. Um, it's an exciting event and it's been an exciting week. It's been a busy week. It's been an engaged and positive week. Uh, we're coming to the close of it. And uh, this particular event will speak to, I suppose, the heart of National Volunteer Week. It'll speak to some of the aspiration. It'll talk about plans moving forward. Let me acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands we are all meeting on today. For me, I'm in Mianjin, otherwise known as Brisbane, on the lands of the Yuggera and Turrbal people. I pay my respects to their elders past and present. Uh, I further extend those respects to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who may well be joining us today and extend those respects further to traditional custodians of the lands that you may well be joining from, um, but for all of the traditional custodians around this country. Today's event is a celebration uh, of volunteering uh, and all that it offers. Uh, the third for National Volunteer Week this year, as I'm sure you know, is something for everyone and it speaks to inclusion, it speaks to diversity, it speaks to opportunity and it speaks to aspiration. It talks about the fact that we can all be involved in volunteering in ways that make sense to us. Um, there is a place, there is an opportunity, there really is something for everyone. We are expecting to be joined by the Honourable Amanda Rishworth, Minister for Social Services, um, and we'll also be doing some other things today. Say thank you uh, for, for joining us. Um, the, uh, the government and certainly your department has been a strong advocate of uh, volunteering, of the work that volunteers do, the place within community. So perhaps without um, holding you up any further, uh, let me uh, let me call the minister, Minister Ishworth. Well, thank you very much. Um, and really, really pleased uh, to be with you today uh, in National Volunteers Week. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which I'm on, um, the Ghana people, and pay my respect to elders past, uh, present and emerging, and also acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands in which you're all on. Um, also acknowledge um, Yuma, CEO of Volunteering Australia, Zach Reimers, the National Strategy Director, Sarah Wilson, the National Strategy Advisor, but all of those that work with volunteers, that are volunteers. Um, it is really wonderful to join with you today. I think um, as we celebrate um, National Volunteer Week, something for everyone, I think it is really important, and I really reflect on the strategy that you've put together, that um, uh, the theme really does recognise the diverse passions and talents of volunteers um, across Australia, but also uh, that the stereotype of who a volunteer is is not necessarily set in stone uh, and that everyone can explore that volunteering uh, opportunity because, of course, volunteering is for everyone, but it also impacts everyone. Now, I've made this uh, comment a few times across my volunteering uh, exposure started very early and I, I have said to a few people that it wasn't always a good uh, a good experience and I was always a little resentful because it was actually my grandmother uh, who was um, a prolific volunteer um, and I was always jealous of volunteering because she would be on on Tuesday morning she did meals on wheels on Thursday afternoon, she was at the Flinders Medical Centre volunteering. Every second Friday, she was at Provis, and actually the list goes on. Um, and so I was a, a, always a little grumpy, felt like I was a bit sec second fiddle. And it wasn't really until I found myself um, volunteering at my swimming club as a swimming instructor, volunteering as a surf life state of, uh, volunteering at school as well, being involved, um, that I realised just what an impact uh, that her role model really was for me. And I think I often say that to volunteers, um, that you are actually not only making a difference from the work you do, but you actually are amazing ambassadors and role models um, for people out there. 
And I, I have often also said, and, and I know it is the job of volunteering organisations to put the dollar figure on for governments, and I think that's very important. You know, how many billions of dollars does it uh, save the economy? Does it grow the economy? Is it worse to the GDP? But when I reflect on volunteering, I have to say that uh, while it's really important for us to understand the economic benefits, it is also the intangible benefits you just can't actually put a figure on. Because when volunteers bring their passion and commitment, it's actually something you can't pay people for. Um, because it, it, it's something very intangible and something very special. So I think um, it's really important. I would like to acknowledge that volunteering has had a, a pretty big upheaval. We, we've seen changes to the way people have volunteered and also, of course, the numbers of vo volunteers. And COVID in particular in, interrupted uh, that connection um, and uh, has been quite a significant, significant moment in time that has disrupted the volunteering ecosystem to some extent. Um, so. I'm very focused on, as I know many of you are, on how we rebuild it, how do we uh, engage with organisations and individuals, um, individuals that may have felt they've been excluded from volunteering opportunities, how do we embrace that um, and encourage that? And so I am really pleased um, that as we work through um, the National Strategy for Volunteering, um, and I would like to give a lot of credit to Volunteering Australia, but also the other organisations that contributed for really what was extensive research and consultation about the ecosystem um, that really sets us a, a wonderful direction. Um, now, the strategy, of course, is underpinned by those three key focus areas, the volunteer, the community and the conditions for volunteering. And the strategy does aim to ensure volunteering is inclusive and accessible to everyone and that Australians understand and, and value volunteering. I think when we think about that inclusion piece, it not only is something that is the right thing to do, but it's something that will has have so much benefit. And I know that the Prime Minister spoke about this when the Filipino president was in town, but I've equally heard this story as well. A small CFS, a country fire association in, uh, in Port Wakefield in South Australia, um, was really declining in volunteers. Um, and um, they engaged, um, you know, that it was looking like it was going to have to shut up shop. It did uh, attract one of a new, newly arrived member of the Filipino community. Um, and as a result of that engagement, that CFS is thriving now with approximately 50% of its members being drawn from the Filipino community. And it is a thriving country fire association um, that probably has never been stronger. So the benefits of that inclusion piece is not just about social good, it is actually about tapping in to some potential um, that can support people to thrive. And um, look, I know that uh, our government and, and my department is, is currently working with Volunteering Australia um, for funding options for continued coordination of the strategy and the implementation of the th uh, first three year action plan. Um, but of course, we don't want to see this as just top down from government. We also want to see communities remain as the primary driver of volunteering. And I think the strategy provides a very sound base to support and guide stakeholders to navigate the changing volunteer landscape and to create a better Australia through volunteering. Um, one of the areas we are really focused on is encouraging younger generations uh, this volunteering week. Young people um, are, of course, the future of the volunteering sector and have a lot to give. One of the interesting things that is coming out of our research shows that young people who engage in volunteering prior to entering the workforce are more likely to have a lifelong connection with volunteering. And that is certainly my lived experience um, uh, that I had with the connection of my grandmother. But 
they are they they what our research is also saying is that we need to encourage them to take the next step while they may be considering as young people looking at volunteering it's sort of an idea that comes to them and they don't necessarily follow it up so that is why we are looking at investing in a three million dollar national advertising campaign to encourage those young people if they've thought about it to actually take the next step to highlight the various ways in which young people can contribute their time and skills and the benefit and the positive impact that volunteering can have to create around their community so this is uh this advertising campaign is is going to be very much driven uh, uh, by uh, young people as well and we're certainly making sure that it speaks to them in uh, addition we have also in the last financial year got um, a community um, to actually task uh, well we tasked them with building uh, the number of young people in volunteering roles so this is i think an area once again of untapped potential um, that we can uh, tap into um, and i think the funding is about connecting young people to the volunteering who may not be aware of those pathways. As I said, it may have crossed their mind, but they don't know how to take the next step. They don't think about taking the next step. So we want to encourage that. Of course, we've continued our investment through the small community organisation volunteer grants. And it's been my absolute pleasure uh, to go and visit some of those uh, and seeing the innovation that's being used. I visited, um, for example, one organisation that's been using it for um, uh, getting the software for their volunteer management. So really contributed to make it easier for the volunteer coordinator, which is exactly what those grants were de designed to do. Of course, um, there's also the volunteer uh, management activity that we continue to invest um, $40 million over the five years um, for uh, what was a redesigned volunteer management activity. Of course, that when it was redesigned was intended to reduce duplication and build the capacity of volunteer involving organisations to recruit and manage their own volunteers and respond more effectively to the current and emerging needs of local organisations and their volunteers. We are currently undertaking a, what can be considered a mid, uh, mid, uh, midpoint evaluation um, to assess if the outcomes and objectives um, have been achieved. This will enable us in the first instance uh, to look at refining the activities under this scheme um, with the potential to look at what comes next when those five year arrangements are are there for renewal. But what for me is really important is collaboration. Collaboration across the volunteering sector uh, with government is critical, but also collaboration within the volunteering sector is important. And over time, we will need to see and work with you to create closer collaboration in years to come, because that is how uh, that we will enable to enact the vision of the strategy. So look, I would like to finish by just thanking Volunteering Australia for the work you do to uh, uh, strengthen this vital sector. Thank all the state peak bodies, but also all the grassroots organizations on the ground, the volunteer resource centers, uh, all the volunteering, uh, the, all the organizations that facilitate and support volunteers um, because uh, you enable them to go out and get what is not just the contribution they make to society, but as I regularly hear, the contribution uh, or the fulfilment is probably a better word, the fulfilment that those volunteers get back by contributing. So look, um, happy National Volunteers Week. Um, I look forward to uh, continuing to work with you so that we can build a vibrant volunteering uh, sector across Australia. So thanks for having me here today. Minister Rishworth, I thank you for your remarks. I appreciate your uh, your passion um, and your commitment to volunteering um, and, of course, to the national strategy for volunteering. Uh, it's a it's a document, it's a pathway that'll provide us the opportunity to 
ensure that uh, volunteering uh, is strong and sustainable into the future. It provides us with that further opportunity to engage more closely with the volunteering ecosystem. Um, and also note the fact that whilst the work that we do as national and state and territory pigs and all of the parts of the volunteering ecosystem, those, those, those uh, undertakings are really important. Volunteering takes place one-to-one, one-to-many. It takes place within community. It's fundamental to, uh, to community. It's at the heart of communities nationally. And certainly the national strategy speaks to that. I note also, Minister, that you are time limited today and uh, your schedule is full um, and note that you can't stay to the end. We certainly appreciate you making time, uh, delivering those remarks. And uh, thank you also for your good wishes for National Volunteer Week. We might move on and it's a nice little segue into talking about some of the experiences. Uh, we've been running a uh, an initiative called the Share Your Story Initiative. Um, and it's aimed to bring together stories of volunteers, those things which are fundamentally important to the volunteer experience. Um, I would like to uh, hand over now uh, to, um, to the volunteer uh, uh, story showcase. We want to share with you some of the stories that we've received. Um, I, I encourage you also to go to our website. There's, there's a lot more. Um, and also encourage you to send in your, your stories. Uh, this isn't the end of it. Uh, but for the time being, sit back, enjoy the presentation and getting a sense of what volunteering means to volunteers throughout this country.
want to thank the VA team for uh, for putting that presentation together, but more importantly, thank the volunteers who sent in their stories. The stories are inspirational. They speak to the, um, I suppose, the essence of, of volunteering. They talk about inclusion and, and they talk about diversity and they talk about opportunity and they talk about aspiration. They speak to that which is fundamental to community and that is a connection and being engaged and being involved. Um, as I said, we uh, encourage you to you know, send stories in, continue to send them in, um, and uh, we, we want to hear those, those stories. The stories are essential to the ongoing advocacy and the work that we do in building policy. It's about volunteers, ultimately. So thank you all for those who have contributed, uh, for those who, through their story, have inspired others and brought comfort and joy to their communities. We're going to ask you a question, and you know, I know you've all been asked lots and lots of questions uh, over the past uh, 12, 18 months, and we've been largely responsible for a lot of those, but we're going to ask you another one. Um, and we're going to put up a, uh, a little poll question, then we're going to share through a word cloud the responses. The question is pretty simple. How are you celebrating National Volunteer Week? So I encourage you to, uh, to put your responses in. Uh, we're going to, um, to to share a word cloud. Um, do uh, do put in how you've gone about celebrating this uh, this week past. Um, as I say, it's been an interesting one. It's been engaged and it's been uh, busy. Uh, we've um, we've done a lot over the course of this past twelve months collectively, um, and uh, I reflect upon the work that uh, that I've done with my colleagues uh, in the, the state and territory peaks, and I acknowledge their presence today and thank them for coming along, um, but uh, also acknowledge the, the journey that we've all been on uh, with respect to uh, not only building the national strategy, uh, charting a course forward, dealing with the challenges, but also being able to provide some framework around the aspirations. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to put up a... Uh, uh, a, a poll question and uh, and share a word cloud. If that's uh, and I can't see it on my screen, but if that's not happening, certainly feel free to uh, to drop your stories into the uh, into the chat. Um, there's uh, always more than one way to get around these things. You know, I often say volunteering is about finding innovative solutions to uh, problems and challenges within community, and sometimes they relate uh, to uh, to technology as well. Um, so. Uh, if you want to drop in your uh, your uh, experiences over this past uh, week, what you've been doing, how you've been celebrating it, feel free to do so. Um, I'm going to hand over to a couple of people you would know well. Um, these people uh, have been fundamentally and in, uh, intimately involved in the development of the national strategy. I'm sure that if you haven't spoken to them, you may well be in the minority. Um, Zach Reimers and Sarah Wilson, I'm going to point to Sarah in the first instance to um, take us through the, the national strategy, where we're up to um, and what's coming next. Sarah, over to you. Thanks, Mark, and, and good morning, everyone. There's lots of familiar names um, in the in the room today. So my job this morning is just to do a quick recap of how we got here, and hopefully many of you remember me from my travels across the country where we co-designed what is now the National Strategy for Volunteering, and then Zach will talk, talk a bit more about the co-design insights from the development of our first action plan. So um, as I said, many of you would have remembered that we developed a national strategy um, over the course of that year in 2022, which was launched last year. And the national strategy really sets that forward agenda for us all to work towards to uh, have a shared a shared future for volunteering. It provides this 10 year blueprint, which is really about how we can work together collaboratively to create a better future for volunteering. Um, and as many of you probably would remember as well, we underpin that with lots of robust research evidence to make sure that what we were saying wasn't just based on what we think, but really on what the, the statistics and the lived experience tells us about how people are volunteering and participating in volunteering. And the vision that we came up with out of all of those consultations was that by 2033, we hope that volunteering is the heart of Australian communities. And the reason that's so important is because volunteering just underpins everything. And it's so, um, last night I was at the Volunteering uh, WA Awards for their Volunteer of the Year Award, and the minister said, you know, volunteers hide in plain sight. And I thought it's so true that we, we sort of forget when we look around in our communities every day that we are touched by volunteering everywhere that we go. So. 
In terms of achieving that vision of making volunteering the heart of Australian communities, we created a national strategy that was designed to be owned by all of us across the volunteering ecosystem. And the reason for that is because we recognise, just like the Minister said, that we can't have a top-down approach to achieving this. Volunteering is intrinsically participatory, it intrinsically comes from people working in communities every single day. And for that reason, we need a top down and a bottom up approach to make sure that it really does meet the needs of all stakeholders across that ecosystem. So how do we achieve the vision that we set out to, to do? Um, what we did with the national strategy is break it down into three focus areas that are underpinned by 11 strategic objectives. And then we're in the process now of establishing these, these three year action plans that will bring that to life and help us see how we are achieving those um, objectives over the course of the next 10 years. Those focus areas and aims um, were largely divided into sort of three, and the Minister spoke to this, so I won't labour this point, but three areas around the individual potential and the volunteer experience, the community and social impact and conditions for volunteering to thrive. Um, and really, this is for anyone out there who's interested in implementing the strategy in their own organisation. These are those three anchor points that you can really use to think about how you're also contributing to this in the work that you do every single day in community. Those 11 strategic objectives um, really are about how we achieve those three focus areas. And you can see them here on the screen now. Um, and these are where we are now devising those actions that will help us get to um, a future where we are focusing on the volunteer experience, making sure that the ways we articulate, understand um, volunteering really demonstrate the diversity of the activity, they're inherently community led, and also that we have conditions in place that enables volunteering to thrive. And we know that that resourcing is absolutely critical. Anyone who has had to listen to me talk will always hear me say that just because volunteers might work for free it doesn't mean volunteering is free and we all know that intimately in this space um, that it takes a lot of time commitment effort and financial resources for volunteering to really happen well in community um, and part of the the focus area three is really about us figuring out how we can get to a point where that strategic investment is sustainable over sort of the next 10 years and beyond so we went through a, well, we're still in the process of going through a sort of phased approach to the national strategy. So you, many of you will have participated in that development phase, which went through the year of 2022. We launched the national strategy at the 2023 National Volunteering Conference on Valentine's Day. Uh, if you remember, I've brought the red jacket back just for uh, the anniversary of that. Um, and we are now in what we're calling the establishment phase. And within the establishment phase, really what we've been doing um, is focusing on a couple of things. So first of all, promoting the national strategy. And we've had over 5,000 unique users interact with that, implement it in their own organisations, use it to get uh, funding, all of those sorts of things. Um, and a lot of the work that we're doing is socialising the strategy with stakeholders who might not know about it so that they can see themselves reflected in it and know how they can use it going forward. We've also been developing some key documents to guide implementation um, and these have fancy names on the screen but really what they are, the three action plan, the monitoring and evaluation framework, the model for shared accountability and the governance blueprint are really those sort of things that need to work behind the scenes for us to know the strategy is working, um, for us to understand how different stakeholders are contributing to implementation and for us to have some uh, sort of independent oversight to make sure that things are moving along as they should. Um, and I know that there are lots of people in the audience today who sit on one of our working groups, our council, our establishment design team, who are working very hard behind the scenes to bring everyone's ideas to life into that first three-year action plan. And we're also setting up the strategy for long-term success. So making sure that our governance council is in place and understand how they play a role in that independent oversight and also um, creating a support and network, which Zach will talk to a bit more in detail um, as we move forward. Um, and also one of the things that we've had the pleasure of doing this year is identifying examples of the national strategy in use. So hearing from those organisations, community groups, volunteers, corporates that are taking the national strategy and actually implementing it in their own organisations. And Zach's actually going to take us now through a couple of those case studies. So you can see how people are implementing it and hopefully be inspired to implement it yourselves if you're not already doing so. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and just as the minister was speaking to earlier and Sarah, uh, there are opportunities across the volunteering ecosystem for the national strategy to be actively used as a tool that benefits uh, people all across volunteering, no matter what your role is, and can help you with uh, alignment, being part of this national strategy and giving you direct benefits and inspiration as well. So I wanted to highlight two examples 
for us here today. One is from Play Matters Australia. I, I believe they're in the audience today, so thank you, Play Matters. And one of the things that we've discussed with them is that they are working to establish a steering group. Maybe think of it maybe like an advisory committee or a council, a focus group, something along those lines that includes volunteers and paid staff, some of whom have responsibilities that include volunteer coordination and management of volunteers. And so when you have a steering group like that, it provides a voice for volunteers to really help us with focus area one, and in particular, that strategic objective about focusing on the volunteer experience. It also helps with making sure that volunteering is inclusive and accessible, and that is not exploitative. So with a steering group set up with a voice for volunteers, they can then speak to matters that affect them. And in what we've heard from Play Matters Australia, what they're looking at actively doing and what they're looking at using the national strategy to inform is asking volunteers their opinion on role design. Are these roles appropriate? Should it be described another way? Should the breakdown of responsibilities occur in a different way? Or is this fitting for your motivations, your needs? Also recognition. National Volunteer Week, of course, includes a lot of recognition of volunteers, um, and there are more opportunities where we can ask people, how would you prefer to be recognized? By impact, by how long you've been volunteering, some other way, um, it, do you want to be celebrated through an award, through a certificate, um, what recognition works for you? Also communication, and so Play Matters Australia was sharing with us, you know, we want to make sure that the emails we send them, the right frequency. Um, is it too much? Is it too little? What's the right amount of information and how often? And also to discuss policy changes to make sure that there's the voice of volunteers in policies that might impact volunteers um, and how they operate within the organization. Another example I wanted to share, and for those who attend our events regularly, this might be one that you recall, but it's just such a wide ranging example I, I couldn't help but mention it again Vinny's wa have used the national strategy in lots of different ways the minister mentioned earlier the volunteer grants program so Vinny's wa referenced the national strategy when they were applying for those grants and that of course makes sense because it's a national funding program it's from the federal government and so aligning with the national strategy helps you communicate your local impact in a national context. They're also forming partnerships with local organizations. In this case, they paired up with a college to help measure the impact and value that volunteering has within their organization. This is something that many managers and volunteers want to do, but we just might not all have the time or maybe the tools at our disposal um, or the expertise haven't done it before to know what's the best way to tackle that. And so forming those partnerships can be really, really valuable. Once they had that measurement of the, the impact of volunteering, they were then able to communicate it through a regular newsletter. They also developed volunteer surveys like exit surveys, and it helped them deliver new training as well. So wide ranging examples of the national strategy having practical benefits and value for your day to day volunteer engagement. So May from Vinny's WA in a conversation with her, she said this about it, it gave us permission to be bold. I, I really love that. I love that permission to be bold. Um, she also talked about it, the national strategy having these high level concepts that work well. Maybe you're uh, applying for a funding proposal, maybe you're writing an annual report, or maybe you're making a pitch to your high level uh, leadership or board. But also it has practical applications in terms of day to day volunteer engagement, volunteering, volunteer management. Um, and May said that they use that as the fundamentals of operations plan. And she showed us what her copy of the national strategy looks like. And I'm, I'm pleased to see it's has seen a lot of good use over the years uh, or over the year. Uh, coffee stain there, it's dog-eared, it's got notes throughout. That's a copy of the national strategy that I personally love to see. It looks like our copies that we have that we work off as well. So the national strategy for volunteering, it's available for you to use now in your volunteering practice. And action is being taken across Australia to implement the national strategy to enhance and strengthen volunteering and to advocate for volunteers. And that's actions being taken by volunteer involving organizations, by governments, by researchers, by peak bodies, 
um, you name it, there's an example out there of the national strategy in use. But alongside these independent, sometimes internal uses of the national strategy, we'd also benefit from a coordinated approach that helps achieve that vision to make volunteering the heart of Australian communities and also to ensure that there's a long term legacy across the 10 years of the national strategy. The important thing to highlight is that both work. Volunteering takes many different forms and in some cases the right way for you to use the national strategy is to quote it in a document you're using to use as inspiration to apply for funding to help recruit and retain volunteers. But uh, there are also opportunities for alignment and for partnerships and for things like the three year action plan and both are valid uses of the strategy. So one coordinated approach is through alignment of strategies. So across Australia, and I'm sure many uh, people represent groups in this room who have volunteering strategies, but across Australia, states, territories, local governments and organisations are developing or delivering volunteering strategies. So the national strategy for volunteering is an opportunity to, opportunity to align that strategic action towards a common vision so that our efforts can help each other, boost each other and have that multiplying effect across different uh, states, territories, organizations, sectors within volunteering, however you want to look at it. One example of that alignment, one of many, is from uh, South Australian government. Uh, this one's fresh on my mind because um, the South Australian had their volunteering conference the other day and their minister was there talking about alignment with the national strategy for volunteering and the benefits it offers. So I thought, why not put it in here? So the national strategy is being used to refresh the volunteering strategy at the state level within South Australia. And just taking a quote from what the South Australian government said, the launch of the new national strategy presents a timely opportunity to review progress and ensure that the SA strategy aligns with the new national objectives. And so maybe within your organization, you already have your own volunteering strategy to set goals. Uh, maybe you have an organization strategy and you can use the national strategy to expand your focus, to include volunteers as an active part of that. Um, there are also state and territory strategies across Australia that are either active or in development. And there have been many signs across the board that they are looking at the national strategy as well to inform their use of it. So alignment is one form of collaborative action. There's also the action plan, which I'll get to in the moment, but I want to highlight between the in independent internal use of the national strategy, this collaborative approach, this alignment, I wanted to ask people in the room, what approach do you think works best for you and your role within volunteering? Would it be working within your own group, uh, would, within your own volunteer involving organization, department, peak body? Would it be collaborating with others offers you the most benefit, um, participating in the action plan or both? Uh, do both really work for you and your situation in volunteering? And so uh, please feel free to put that in the chat. I've got a pop up on my screen where I'm able to vote in a poll. And we can see that mo more than two thirds of people are saying both. Uh, so far, which is fantastic. Those responses will continue to trickle in. Um, for those who don't have a poll, just put it in the chat and we'll be able to see that as well. Um, and this really fits what we know about volunteering, is that volunteering takes many different forms. There's many different understandings and relationships that people can have with volunteering. And so the national strategy has a need to be flexible and accessible and to offer multiple points of entry. Please feel free to keep on typing in the chat what works for you um, or for those where the poll popped up to vote in there as well. While you're looking at that, I will introduce the idea of the three year action plan that Sarah introduced earlier. So first, what is an action plan? I'm sure most people in this room already know, but if, if I'm to take a sort of clinical definition of an action plan is a defined set of tasks that are often assigned to a stakeholder and they are designed to achieve a goal. We can think of it as many things. We can think of it as a to-do list. We can think of it as uh, demonstrated commitments. We can think of it as an allocation of responsibilities. 
But also in our case in the national strategy, there's a specific lens we need to take, which is we need to create opportunities to collaborate and to achieve broad long term change. Now, the national strategy for volunteering was co-designed and is co-owned and the action plan must reflect those values. And in some ways, the action plan for the national strategy is different from some other strategies that you may see that are more prescriptive and top down, like the minister was describing some other strategies earlier. So the national strategy for volunteering must, I think of as keep the door open. It has to keep the door open for everyone involved in volunteering. I worked as a manager of volunteers myself for 10 years for organizations big and small. And I know that we didn't, we weren't always in a position to make a three year commitment up front. Sometimes we needed to play it by ear, have a wish list, and then take action at the time when it suited us. At the same time, those commitments within an action plan are really valuable to communicate who is participating and what is happening. So in terms of the co-design process, there's an ideation phase, generating ideas, hearing from the voluntary ecosystem, what action would you like to see take place? And I think there are many people in the audience today who attended some of these workshops. So we had six public workshops, we had 25 targeted one-on-one -on -one consultations, six state and territory level meetings as well, workshop sessions, and also going back through the data from the development phase. From all of these, there's 1,600, there's more than 1,600, in fact, different or ideas for actions that were generated. Now, I just caught myself when I said different because many of these, as you can imagine, align with each other. I think uh, aligning background checks, working with children checks, I think that came up about 80 times. Uh, different ideas for funding reform and, and targeted funding and volunteering came up dozens of times as well. So, then we look at refining those ideas, clustering those ideas around a central theme and thinking, how, what can this look like in practice as an action? Now, really, really valuable partners through this refinement phase have been the establishment design team. And I thank everyone in that design team. It's been 30 to 40 people across volunteering who have been meeting for hours and hours to help refine these ideas. Also within uh, Volunteering Australia, the staff who help coordinate the national strategy, such as Sarah and our colleague Jack, have been working on this as well. And then testing these ideas, these actions with key stakeholders to ensure that they're valuable, practical and appropriate. That all results in the three year action plan and then delivery of the action plan. It needs to go through the governance processes and endorsement through the National Strategy for Volunteering Council. It needs to be shared with the voluntary ecosystem and there need to be some commitments from leading stakeholders as well. I want to give a little glimpse as to some of the uh, points that were raised in that idea generation. So we can see here on the screen an advisory panel. We've got some notes about a volunteer conference, about restoring the ratio of paid staff to volunteers. Uh, we have some notes about uh, speaking out. We have some notes about ensuring standards. You can see there's a, a lot of depth, a lot of complexity and a lot of ideas that have come in there. In fact, there were too many to fit on one screen, so it's a bit cut off at the top and bottom there. But short of forcing you to sit through a slideshow of 1600 slides, how can we communicate these ideas? So looking at the work done by the establishment design team and also some um, colleagues at our end, we grouped them into a few key clusters, and that's what I want to share with you today. Now, I'll be going through these, there'll be a fair bit of text on screen, but if you sign up to updates for the National Strategy Volunteering Newsletter, we'll share the text of these with you uh, next week. So one cluster of ideas was around knowledge and knowledge sharing. So better understanding the volunteer experience. This goes back to um, the examples we raised earlier, from uh, Vinnie's WA, where they started doing a new type of volunteer survey, and also from uh, Play Matters, where they're looking at setting up that steering group. And the minister spoke to this as well, uh, better understanding of the benefits of volunteering beyond labour cost. You know, that is one very effective way to measure the value of volunteering. There's another way which speaks more to the heart and the, uh, the well-being and the community building aspects of volunteering as well. There's also some ideas there around continued and collaborative research, which has been such a strong part of the national strategy so far. Also advocacy and recognition. You can see here, uh, people have called for stronger advocacy for volunteers and wider campaigns to participate in. When we were doing the co-design process, 
we got some great news um, every now and again, which is when someone would ask for something that actually already exists. So in some cases, people asked for um, groups to represent volunteering in policy, in budget submissions, things like that. And we were very happy to point them in the direction of their state and territory volunteering peak body, uh, Volunteering Australia, or in your local area may also have a volunteer resource centre, a volunteer support service who provide this service as well. So when people call consistently for something that already exists, that highlights a new type of opportunity, which is sharing the audience who are interested in the national strategy with these initiatives that are already taking place for mutual benefit to enhance both and to make a more consistent experience across the volunteering ecosystem and to grow that audience over time. People also called for sharing the story of volunteering. Now we saw some great examples earlier in today's session because we know that one of the most effective ways to get people into volunteering is to share a story of a volunteer, especially someone that they can relate to or someone they know, a friend or family. We know that word of mouth is most likely the most commonly used uh, technique to try and recruit volunteers and it's one of the most commonly used ways that people hear about volunteering when they get into it. So better ways to consistently share these volunteer stories as part of national initiatives like the one that's been part of National Volunteer Week is something people called for as an action throughout the three year action plans that make up the remaining nine years of the national strategy. Also for volunteering to be a stronger part of the students experience at school. We know that during those formative years, that's when you can form many of your impressions about the world. And if you have a positive experience volunteering, a guided experience, one that's flexible and, and meets your needs, then you're more likely to get into volunteering and be a part of the ecosystem going forward. People also called for better process, better protections, better policy. The interface between uh, volunteering and policy can sometimes be complex and uh, there's a lot of different facets to it. Of course, people called for less burden associated with volunteering checks. Right now, uh, the experience of getting those background checks and police checks, working with children checks for volunteers, it's different between different states and territories and some have a smoother experience than others. People also talked about insurance access. That can be a complicated arena to get into and then the product you find, if you do find one that's suitable, can sometimes be very expensive and inaccessible to you. So what can be done through the national strategy to get action there? People also called for more partnerships and resourcing, stronger links between managers of volunteers. There are volunteer managers networks out there between uh, state and territory peak bodies and also local volunteer centers. Um, what can we do to get more people in there having that uh, peer support, that buddy system, that mentoring, and that sharing and collaboration between volunteering, between VIOs. So like I said, many different ideas that have come up there. Each of these have one, two, or three key actions that have been written that are associated with these that are being proposed to key stakeholders who would be seen as leaders or necessary parts of that action taking place. Now those ideas are being tested and those tested ideas that offer the most value, that have the most support and are the most practical and accessible will be the ones that work their way into the three year action plan. So in terms of that co-design process, that's where we're up to now, testing ideas with key stakeholders. They're also being assessed against criteria that were established not by us, but by the volunteering ecosystem, uh, especially by the establishment design team. And it's a key thing to note that like volunteering itself, the action plan needs to present flexible and accessible opportunities to participate for mutual benefit. So what can you do? You can go ahead and use the national strategy to enhance your volunteering practice or collaborate with others. Uh, it was about 60 to 70 percent of people in that poll before said that they would like both opportunities to work with others and to do something more independently. Well, the national strategy is out there. It's available for you to use, and I hope that some of these examples today have served as inspiration of how you can use it. If you're looking for a place to start, look at the strategic objectives and see which one speaks most to you. You can also share your story with us. Help us celebrate and learn from your use of the national strategy because we want to learn from you, get other people up to where you are, even if you're just looking at making plans, or maybe there's something we can help you with to connect you with a peer who's using the national strategy 
or to give you any guidance. You can subscribe to receive updates directly from the National Strategy for Volunteering team, and you can sign up as a supporter through the Coalition of Support. So what is the Coalition of Support? It's a network of groups that have made a public commitment to the National Strategy for Volunteering and its vision. And uh, you can see some logos and names scrolling on the side there. Now, this is accurate as of a few days ago, and I think we've had about 20 or more sign up just since then in the last about 48 hours. So apologies if you signed up recently and your logo is not on there, but you can see it's a wide range of people across the volunteering ecosystem. We're looking to incorporate individuals as well to demonstrate your support to identify peers and collaborators. And importantly, this network will help form key partnerships to realize action through the action plan. And so what does this all mean? Let's go back to that vision, which is the key part of the national strategy. Volunteering is the heart of Australian communities. So by working together through the national strategy, we can chart a new course for volunteering in Australia. You can join the national movement, whether you prefer to do it through independent action, through a guided experience through the three action plan, whether you want to be one of those leading stakeholders, in which case, if we haven't already been in touch with you, I encourage you to get in touch with us and we'll have that conversation, see what the most appropriate role is for you within the action plan. Because the key thing is, whatever your role is in volunteering, there is something for everyone. The national strategy is for everyone and we look forward to joining you, working together to make volunteering the heart of Australian communities. Thank you. Thanks so much, Zach. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, we are drawing to a close. Uh, with four minutes to go, I would like to uh, to thank you for your participation. I will let you know, as is oftentimes the case with an event of this nature, we'll be sending out a short um, evaluation survey. Uh, we'll send that out this afternoon. I encourage you to complete it. Uh, we're always keen to get your feedback. There are always things that we can do better. And it's through your voice that we can make a difference on your behalf. I'd like to thank our speakers for today. Um, the Honourable Amanda Rishworth, Minister for Social Services, Zach Reimers, Sarah Wilson. Um, I also want to note, and I took it the opportunity of having a look through the attendees uh, whilst Sarah and Zach were speaking. We had around about 300 people who uh, uh, registered for the event, and I know many of those will be getting the video and watching it after work or when, when time permits. Um, but it was a great um, it was a great pleasure to see so many names in there that I know friends uh, from along the journey. Um, I know in particular, obviously, the state and territory peak bodies um, who are members of Volunteering Australia. Um, I the, the Department of Social Services. I noted also that uh, CEO of Smith Family, uh, Doug Taylor, is joining us today. Uh, Doug is the chair of the National Strategy Council. Doug, thank you for coming along. Uh, I want to thank you all uh, for being here, for attending, for participating when the technology worked and when it didn't. Um, and uh, thank you also for your enthusiasm over this National Volunteer Week. It's a week in a year where we get the opportunity to celebrate uh, volunteers who oftentimes don't put up the hand for recognition themselves. It's an opportunity to acknowledge the fundamental nature of volunteering within Australian community, at the heart of Australian community. It's an opportunity this year also to say that no matter who you are, where you are, what capacity you have, what time you have, the contribution that you make is fundamental. There really is within volunteering something for everyone. I want to thank you all um, and thank volunteers throughout this nation uh, and wish you well for the remainder of your day and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks everyone.